Greetings and Chatelet, everyone. This is the Leica Q2. And uh, if you understand about my YouTube channel, you might want to read a header on there and uh, why comments are disabled. But I uh, converse with plenty of people about this stuff on my website. So uh, you can always go there. And you can also find the uh, photos that I'm taking with this camera on my website under photos and uh, Leica Q2. I had the Q1 before. They just called it the Q type uh, 116 I think it was the uh, I had uh, monochrome Noctilux and uh, had like a film cameras and um, a lot of compact cameras I want to say something about the compact cameras is that uh, most of what we know as compact cameras from Leica are those ones made by Panasonic like the uh, Deluxe 7, Deluxe 6, 5, 4, 3 and so on uh, the C-Lux and uh uh, the Leica C and um, so on and so forth. But the uh, first really compact camera uh, in terms of uh, maybe being the smallest APS-C camera, the Leica X1 came out in 2009. That was a breakthrough design. And then uh, the Q when it came out full frame at a uh, fairly small size as it was, it was pretty much a breakthrough. Those, uh, those, this is in, in essence a compact camera because it's, you know, it's a fixed lens, 28 millimeter, and it's a, you know, more or less a point and shoot. It's got a lot of features and so on, but um, still it's just a, you know, one piece camera. So uh, I'm gonna get into certain things on this. The, um, uh, especially wanna cover any anomalies with this camera. Uh, what we have on here is that uh, thumbs up lens cap on here, the rubber lens cap that has uh, a lens cap string. And uh, the guys that uh, Leica sold it to me and I, I'm using it, it seems to be okay. I like having a lens cap string there, that's very handy. Because I like to keep the lens cap handy, I don't like going around with the lens exposed. I know a lot of people do, but you know, there's a lot of dirt in the air. And this is a high-res camera, 47 megapixels. Let's pull this uh, front of this thing off right here. There's a lens hood on here. And uh, I've been taking this lens hood off. I'm not sure right off exactly how I do take it off. Might have to squeeze something on the side here to get that to pop off. But anyway, that's a uh, f1.7. Let's see if we can focus on that here. Sumilux F1.7 uh, and so on and uh, the main features here we have a macro ring so we can uh, shift this into macro and when we do that the uh, scale changes too you can watch that scale change as the uh, macro gets rotated in and out all right and that works okay and then uh, we have the um, aperture dial up here Normally I shoot an aperture priority, which is basically I select an aperture here and then uh, put the uh, shutter speed dial on automatic. But you can shoot a fully automatic if you want to. And um, this thing weighs a little over a pound and a half. And it does have some differences between the regular Q. It's got a good viewfinder here. Which I don't use. I use the screen because I'm nearsighted and I don't really need a viewfinder. I, uh, the camera came only with its own strap and I I keep the strap on the bag rather than on the camera so I use a uh, use a wrist strap on this side which came from a different camera and then the uh, lens string is attached on the other side. So I suppose we can turn this on here put it on playback and I got some photos here this morning the thing of it is they have a uh, crop mode on here take a look at that uh, by pushing this button right up here you can see the crop line come on for 35 millimeter 50 75 millimeter so I took some yesterday at 75 millimeter which crops uh, about 63% and images look pretty good. They're only seven megapixels at uh, at the maximum crop, but uh, still pretty good. A lot of detail there. 47 megapixels with no cropping, of course, you get pretty incredible detail. The detail here is really noticeable. 
Now for me to set the, uh, it's one of the peculiars of this new camera to set the uh, exposure compensation and just click this dial right here. Oh no, that's the ISO actually. So that's uh, pushing down on here. And uh, what do we have? Oh, we're showing the exposure compensation now. We can move that back to zero. Yes, and then by clicking that dial one more time, we can uh, change ISO. And I'm keeping it on 400. But uh, imagine uh, with that full frame sensor here, we can uh, run that up to 16, 3200 indoors and still have very low, uh, low, low noise. And I put it on burst mode and we can see that right there. That's on H for high. They have an S for super. I don't really know what that does. Probably gets in a little bit too much buffering. I'm fine with the high, which I think gets me about 10 frames a second. And then, um, let's see, we need a, uh, a grip on here. They have this little thumb rest thing right here on the back, a little indent, which is okay, but it's uh, not as good as the uh, grip, so I'm, I ordered a grip which goes on to the bottom and then onto the side. So on the front here, instead of having this smooth surface, I'll have a grip on here. So, um, I think the other thing I wanted to do on here was look at the menu. Let's see if we can just set this down and scroll through this menu. And let's focus here a little bit. And there we go. Focus, please. Drive mode, again, that's on high. Focusing, focus mode, autofocus single. Uh, the area of the things that they do here are a little bit different. They call it field, spot, and multi field. So I choose field. The uh, assistant lamp is on, which is fine. Focus assist is on, which. Uh, it's, uh, you know, magnifies the screen when you're on manual focus. Very helpful. Sometimes touch autofocus have turned off. And exposure metering, I've chosen center weighted. Now the terminology there is kind of standard. Film style, that's standard, vivid, natural, mono. Those I'm all used to. And then uh, you got some settings underneath there for uh, sharpness, contrast and uh, saturation. User profile I don't use, like the photos I don't use, main menu. And there we get uh, some more details. We can do ISO off of here, but I get it off the uh, main camera. And then you have your ISO settings, of course, where you can determine maximum ISO, minimum shutter, all that sort of thing, and white balance. And then also under white balance, you get, uh, you can choose the, um, you know, temperature. Uh, pick an exact number JPEG resolution large and uh, color management sRGB that's what I use film style scene mode they have a lot of scene modes on here like a lot of modern digital cameras digital zoom is that button on the front that does the different frame lines at uh, different uh, crops those crops only apply to the JPEGs if you're doing JPEG and RAW your JPEG will be cropped but the RAW will not the OIS is off. The OIS on here is not like the uh, OIS on other cameras where you actually have lens movements or sensor movements. It's uh, something a little different. Uh, most of the critics are saying um, don't because it just, you know, reduces your resolution. And the electronic shutter is an odd thing. Off is, it's always off. On, it's always on. And this extended is apparently the only way the camera gets to choose between a mechanical and uh, electronic shutter, depending on circumstances, whatever those are. Flash, exposure, preview, user profile. There's the video settings here. Capture assistance. Uh, looks like I got all that off. Display settings. And uh, there you can choose how to set up your uh, EVF. And auto review, turn that off. Customize, file name, reset, power saving, power saving, and just do the simple stuff. Five minutes and one minute for the screen. Acoustic signal, always set the volume high and a shutter sound, turn off the other stuff. Play mode setup, 
you have an option here to do group displays. So if you do a burst, uh, it will appear in a group or you can uh, look at the individual photos. And I just set that off. And what else do we have on here? Format card. They don't have a low level format on here, just plain old format. Yeah, it works okay. I've got a 128 gig card in here. Camera info, this one happens to be 1.1 firmware, the latest firmware. And date and time is very flexible. Language English, reset camera. So there we're done with our uh, menu. Now, what else do I need to say about this? Probably not very much. They have, there's only three buttons on the other side. Now when I have uh, something on play back here, to uh, delete the picture conveniently, I push the function button. And then I push the center button on the uh, left, right, up, down wheel. And that'll delete the picture because you can see the little uh, trash can mark over here to the right. And then uh, for every one I want to delete, I just keep pushing that center button. I don't have to do anything else. And then when I'm done deleting, I have to remember to push the play button to, to get out of that delete mode. And uh, so it's very simple and it seems to have access to all the functions that I need without having to actually go into the menu. And uh, so it's a, it's a rather simple camera. $5,000 point and shoot, if you will. It's pretty heavy. Has incredible resolution. Now I had a, when I had a monochrome, it was only a 18 megapixel full frame, but the resolution on it was better than the Leica Q, which is 24 megapixel. And it may be just because of the dedicated black and white sensor, but uh, the resolution was real high. I'm sure this will match that monochrome. In fact, any new monochromes that are 24 megapixel I imagine it'll match those. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. Of course, it depends on the amount of light you're getting. You need really good light to get the best res. So uh, here's a quick look at my Leica Q2. And uh, it's a very plain, very black camera with just the um, just a little like a red dot on it to say what the heck it is. Well, you can tell by all these lens markings, it's a fairly professional kind of lens on there. And one thing about the uh, Q2 is that what a lot of people have said is that in, in the Leica world, if you're talking about the rangefinders like the M, M9, M10, whatever they are, uh, if you wanted to buy uh, such a camera, one of the rangefinders, with a lens this quality, you're into about uh, $12,000. And this is only $5,000. So if you want an absolutely top-notch 28 millimeter lens and a uh, camera to go with it and give up the flexibility of interchangeable lenses, there you go, five grand, you're getting a really, really top-notch camera. So um, there you go. Uh, for the person who knows what they're getting, uh, highly recommended. Thank you very much.